Hello, this is Bono. I recently took a survey on Twitter and found that many people are quite concerned about how to read psychic schematics like this. So this time, I would like to talk about how to read psychic schematics, which you don't have to be an electrician to understand. Please watch this movie to the end. First, I'll choose the basic rules of schematics that you should at least know. There are no absolute rules for schematics, but there are some conventions that should be easy to read for everyone. There are four such conventions, roughly speaking, as follows. I will introduce them one by one using the published Arduino schematics as an example. The first one is that electricity flows roughly from left to right. For example, in this part of the circuit, the power supply voltage will be in is input on the left side, and the voltage divided by the resistor enters the comparator and is output on the right side. The signal is input to the FET, which also receives a signal from the left side, and when the FET turns on, the signal is transmitted to the right side, where 3.3V voltage is output from the right side through the voltage regulator. Although a quick glance at the schematic does not show the direction of the current, it will be easier to read and understand if you keep this basic rule in mind. The next is to write the higher voltage on the top and the lower voltage on the bottom. Voltage is often described as a dam, so this image should be easy to understand. As you can see from the schematics, in many places, high voltage is written on the top. Next is that areas connected by the same line are at the same voltage level. For example, since they are connected to each other in this section, they will all have the same voltage applied to them. The last thing is that if the power supply, ground, and level have the same name, they are connected to each other. For example, if you look at its schematic, there are many power supplies with the name plus 5V, but they are all connected on the circuit. There are also signals with the same name, USB, VCC, here and here, uh, which are separated on the schematic but are actually connected to each other. This is done to reduce the number of the lines as much as possible to avoid messing up the schematic. Where to cut the wire depends entirely on the sense of the person who draws the schematic, so it is up to each person to decide. Next, I will introduce the circuit symbols that you should memorize at the minimum. It is much easier to read a schematic if you memorize the circuit symbols in advance, so let's keep them in mind here. So I have compiled a list of them. First, here are the circuit symbols for the very basic electronic components. Resistors are used equally in this jug or square one. The capacitors are marked with a plus sign on one side if they are of the oriented type like electrolytic capacitors. Diodes and LEDs have the same elementary structure, so the same symbol is used only with or without an arrow to indicate the right. Transistors and FETs are each of two types, differing only in the direction of the arrow. Transistors are easy to remember because the direction of the current flow matches the direction of the arrow, but FETs are maybe a little harder to understand sensibly because they represent the direction of parasitic diodes that are created in the device due to its structure. This is a power supply, and the symbol used to differ depending on whether it is DC or AC. These are circuit symbols that are key to reading and understanding schematic diagrams. GND and GRAND are sometimes used interchangeably, but they have strictly different meanings. As GND is a voltage reference point in a circuit, and GRAND is a connection point to the earth. Signal lines are used to connect the distant locations on a circuit diagram. The direction of the arrows matches the direction of the inputs and outputs, making them easy to read and understand. For wiring, black circles are replaced where the lines are connected to each other. 
It is said that it is better to avoid making crosses on a schematics because it is sometimes difficult to tell if there are black circles or not. Finally, I have also included some parts for special purposes. You will encounter these parts frequently, so please keep them in mind while you are at it. I will post these tables on the website, so please bookmark them so that you can check them anytime. Finally, just two little tips for reading schematics. First, schematics are often grouped by function to some extent, so it is easier to read and understand them if you understand them by function. In this Arduino schematic, it is divided into power supply sections, CPU section, interface section, and so on. So, for example, if you look at the power supply section, you can focus on the flow on the power supply, such as how many volts are created based on which voltage. Second, schematics contain the designer's intentions. One of the reasons for this is that after drawing a schematic, the designer then starts board layout and pattern design, and which time the designer refers to the information on the schematic. For example, crystals, which are the heart of the CPU, and capacitors, which are used for several operations, should be placed near the CPU, so they are often drawn near the CPU in the circuit diagram as well. In this way, if you can in mind that a schematic is not just a drawing, you will have a deeper understanding of the circuit and will be able to step up to a higher level. This time, I have talked about how to read a schematic diagram, which you don't have to be an electrician to understand. You may have a lot to memorize at first, but there are usually only a limited number of circuit symbols that you will encounter. So let's start with just the symbols introduced here. That's all for today. In addition, this channel posts videos that help beginners to learn electronics from scratch in a systematic way including explanations of the minimal knowledge and the tools that a beginner in electronics should acquire. If you are a beginner of electronics, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I am looking forward to your comments and the good buttons about this video. Have a nice electronics life, bye! Thank you.